previously we looked at the careful definition of a convergent sequence in terms of epsilon and n. And today we want to look at the notion of a bounded sequence and also prove that every bounded sequence is convergent. So let's recall what it means for a sequence to converge. We say that a sequence an converges to a number l, which is a real number, so we're not thinking about infinite limits at this point. And we write the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals l if for every epsilon bigger than zero there is an n, which is a natural number, such that if little n is bigger than n, then a sub n minus l in absolute value is less than epsilon. So what this means is that for any very small number epsilon, we can find a point at which after that point, every part of the sequence is very, very close to this limit value L. Now next, we say that a sequence AN is bounded if there is a real number M such that A sub N is less than or equal to M, and that's in absolute values as well for all N in the natural numbers. In other words, the absolute value of a sequence can only get to a certain size. Okay, and now what we wanna do is prove that if a sequence converges, then it must be bounded. Okay, and so let's see how that goes. So, first of all, we'll go ahead and suppose that we have a convergent sequence. In other words, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals l. And what that means is for any epsilon that we choose, we can find an n where the values of the sequence are very, very close to this limiting value. They are within epsilon of that limiting value. And so what we'll do is we'll pick a nice epsilon and that epsilon will be equal to one. So let's go ahead and set epsilon equal to one and take n, which is a natural number, such that a sub n minus l is less than one for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N. Okay, great. Now the next thing that we wanna do is notice that we can take this inequality in absolute values and get rid of the absolute values if we write that a sub n minus l is between negative one and one, or we can write this as a sub n is between l minus one and l plus one. But now we can use this to write an inequality involving absolute values. In fact, we can write two inequalities involving absolute values. So now we know that zero is less than or equal to the absolute value of a n, because you know when you take the absolute value, you always get a number that's bigger than or equal to zero, which is less than the absolute value of L plus one, and we have zero is less than or equal to the absolute value of A sub N, which is less than the absolute value of L minus one. Now we don't know if L is positive or negative, that's why it's important to look at both of these cases. But we can put both of these cases into one sentence by saying that this implies that the absolute value of A sub N is less than the maximum of the absolute value of L plus one and the absolute value of L minus one. And let's recall that that's true for every little n which is bigger than or equal to this capital N. And this, big, and this capital N depended on this epsilon that we chose to be equal to one. So what we've done is we've shown that our sequence is bounded definitely after we're past this point capital N but now what about what happens before the point capital N? Well, we're in luck because in that case, we only have a finite number of terms in the sequence. And so let's notice that. So the absolute value of A1, the absolute value of A2, all the way up to the absolute value of A N minus one, where that's a capital N minus one is a finite set. So since that's a finite set of real numbers, it has a maximum. And so we can take the maximum of this set together with the maximum of these two numbers, and we will have that a sub n is less than that number for every natural number n. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll summarize that. 
So, so far we have that if n is bigger than or equal to this capital N, which depended on our choice of epsilon being one, then the absolute value of a n is less than or equal to the maximum of L plus one and L minus one. Both of those are in absolute values where L is the limit of the sequence. Then furthermore, we noticed that every other term from the sequence, in other words, the terms a sub one all the way up to a sub n minus one, after we take their absolute values, make a finite set. But with a finite set of real numbers, you can always find a maximum. So let's do that. It has a maximum. Let's call it a. So in other words, we have the absolute value of a sub n is less than or equal to capital A, and that's true for all n between one and capital N minus one. So we've solved the problem if n is bigger than or equal to capital N, and we've solved the problem if n is between one and capital N minus one. Now we just have to put those two together. And we'll do that by doing the following. So let's set capital M equal to the maximum of these three numbers, the absolute value of L plus one, the absolute value of L minus one and A, where A was the maximum of this set. And then notice that by these two facts right here and here, we have the absolute value of A n is less than or equal to M. This is for all N which are natural numbers. So this is true for all n between one and n minus one because of this line. And it's true for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N because of this line up here, which means our sequence is bounded, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up the board and then I'm gonna give a non-example of a bounded sequence which is not. Okay, we just got done proving that every convergent sequence is bounded, and now we wanna show that the converse is not true. In other words, we're gonna give an example of a bounded sequence which does not converge. So let's carefully write down what it means for a sequence to not converge, in other words, to diverge. So, and we'll do that by negating this definition of a convergent sequence. So we say the sequence a n for n equal one to infinity diverges if for all real numbers L there exists epsilon bigger than zero such that for all natural numbers n it we have little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, but we have the absolute value of a n minus L is bigger than epsilon. Okay, so let's talk our way through why this is the negation of this definition. So let's recall when you negate a statement, you change all of the for all statements to there exist statements, and you change all of the there exist statements to for all statements, and then you negate the conclusion. So notice built into this definition is a there exists statement about this limit L. So we've changed that there exists statement to a for all statement. So we have for all L. Then next, we have a for all statement with this epsilon. We've changed that to a there exists statement with this epsilon. Next, we have a there exists statement for this capital N. We've changed that to a for all statement with this capital N. Then for the conclusion, we have an if then statement. And so an if then statement is like an implication statement and you negate those by changing it to an and not statement. And that's exactly what we have. We have n is bigger than or equal to n and the absolute value of a sub n minus L is not less than epsilon. In other words, it's bigger than or equal to epsilon. So if you've, let's go ahead and write that down. So the absolute value of a sub n minus L is not less than epsilon. So that, that's like the not statement of this. Okay, so now that we've got a careful definition for what it means for a sequence to diverge, let's look at an example of a bounded sequence that diverges. So let's maybe consider this statement which is defined by a sub n which equals minus one to the n. So this has the form minus one, one, minus one, one, minus one, one. 
and so on and so forth. So all of the odd indexed terms are negative one and all of the even indexed terms are positive one. And so you can look at that and see that it's bounded. So notice, for instance, that the absolute value of a sub n is less than or equal to one. And that's true for all n, um, which are natural numbers. So it's bounded by one. But this sequence definitely does not converge. And we can show that it satisfies this condition we've built for a divergent sequence in the following way. So let's go ahead and take L, which is a real number, because notice, in order for it to diverge, something has to be true for all real numbers. And we'll actually split this into two cases. So case number one will be if we take L to be bigger than or equal to zero. So let's notice that our sequence A sub N minus L, which we can rewrite as minus one to the N minus L, is going to be bigger than or equal to one, and that's true for all odd n. And then let's look at the second case. So the second case, case two, will be L is less than or equal to epsilon, but then we can write A sub n minus L, but that's the same as minus one to the n minus L, but that's gonna be bigger than or equal to one for all even n. So now let's notice that we have satisfied this definition up here. For all L, which are real numbers, well, real numbers are either bigger than or equal to zero or less than or equal to zero, so that covers all real numbers. There exists an epsilon, so our epsilon in this case would be this number one, such that for all natural numbers n, we have n bigger than or equal to capital N, but a sub n minus L is bigger than or equal to epsilon, but we have that exactly because for all odd n, this difference is bigger than or equal to one, and for all even n, down here we have this thing is bigger than or equal to one. So we have satisfied this definition, which means we found a sequence that is bounded but does not converge, and that's a good place to